first start off, um, name and... <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name's Jesse Lonergan, uh, and I draw comic books. Hi, I'm Ming Doyle, and I am a freelance illustrator and comic book artist based here in the Boston area. Sure, I'm John Hilliard. Um, I uh, do editorial cartoons for the uh, Brookline Tab newspaper. I'm um, sure. My name is Gerald, uh, Gerald Dye. I'm mm -hmm. an illustrator uh, by trade, although I do a lot of things. I teach, I do some design work. I do, I, it's a lot of like different things that come together. Um, my name's uh, Doug DeRocher. I, uh, I make comics and I also am the security supervisor for a, uh, for a building in Newton. When most people think of comics, they think of the big two, Marvel and DC. They account for most of the market, and there's barely any room for independent comic books. Independent comic books don't make a big splash on the sales charts, but they do thrive with an almost cult-like following. Cities like San Francisco and Seattle have had a independent comic book scene since the 1970s. But what about Boston? Well, Boston does have a very strong independent comic book culture, and a lot of their creators were willing to sit down with me and talk about their work and what it's like to be a Boston comic book creator. How exactly did you get started in comics? Like, did you start reading them as a kid? My mom really didn't like comics, and and also I grew up in rural Vermont, so it's not easy to find comic books. Uh, so I, I didn't really start reading them seriously until high school, and I remember just seeing a friend of mine's copy of Spawn, and I was just like amazed. I, I like it was so like detailed and so I just so, like I hadn't seen art like that because I hadn't read comics, and so I'd seen them, but they were all the sort of 1970s Marvel style with like the big bold chin and like the beautiful clean line, and then there's this, this like super like dead rat with a knife in it and like stuff in its teeth you know and the drawings and I was just I just loved it um, and uh, so that's when I started you know drawing comics myself I must have been like 16 maybe and that's when I started reading comics um, you know found a comic book shop 30 miles from my house <laughs> that I could go to like every two weeks or so and um, how'd you get into start making comics I had a class with a um, <clears throat> We, that y'all had, were, that everyone had to take, that was intro um, to uh, experimental illustration. And one of the assignments was to do um, collages. This assignment was just find the colors. You don't want any lines or any details, and then put everything together to make faces from, you know, something that's completely new. Yeah. And that sort of changed the way I thought about this. Yeah, because because for me this was to do collage comics was not the goal. Yeah. Um, mainly because I didn't think it would be possible. So there's a lot of work that goes in, you know, it goes into one page. It starts. It starts with an idea and a, and usually a script. I'm actually have been trying to work a little bit differently mm. um, than I did. I mean, the, the one Android stuff started with a manuscript. I just I spent a year and just wrote wow. for a year. So I have like an 80 page manuscript that I've been pulling from and turning into those little minis. Um, but now I'm sort of doing something different. I've been teaching a class and teaching different. Um, kind of approaches in that class yeah to start with a very very loose script and then mm. use um, like index cards to create quick panel sketches oh, cool. and then from there what I can do is look at the order and do the layouts like that way and I basically just make these really crude things and then mm -hmm. and then kind of lay them out see how they feel next to each other like they're definitely in somewhat of an order but like yeah. I can rearrange them um, it's really effective when I'm teaching because it gives uh, people a chance to look at the sort of the grammar of the comic yeah and see how like if you take a joke comic that's a mm -hmm. two-panel joke you know set up a punchline and then switch it you know what happens uh, yeah. sometimes it's funnier sometimes it's less funny I don't know I'll just do some like really really so like pencil drawings mm -hmm. and then I'll go over it and I'll just really quickly ink it. 
Um, that leaves you with these panels right here. And then I'll attach it to a board. Um, then I'll go down and I'll lay down, you know, all of the color um, that, I, uh, that I have, um, you know, for the characters. And then when it really starts, when I feel like it really starts, things start to come together, I'll just uh, I'll take a piece of black um, art grain paper. You know, just cut out a piece of paper and then, uh, you know, duck it down and then, uh, you know, just add it. Wow. I, I, was, I was just hanging out uh, in New York uh, my friend Tara's gallery, she had this gallery show, and uh, I, I was sort of the only artist there who didn't draw superheroes. And I was just <laughs> looking at these drawings, and I was like, superheroes are pretty cool. Like, <laughs> like they look like a lot of fun to draw, and like, and I, I just came home and, and started drawing them. And I, I guess I, I, I've never really had any interest in drawing like a superhero comic or anything, but like, they're, there's something that's sort of so fun about them dancing. And I chose to do it uh, for a year uh, at one a day, Monday through Friday, uh, on a Tumblr blog. Um, and it's actually been a, a great thing for me personally. I feel like I've, I'm over 200 right now for the year. Um, and it's just sort of, you get all this practice, like drawing anatomy and different postures and also costumes, like it's just like, yeah, Predator. Uh, yeah, Alien, let's do it. Like, like, and just like getting them all done. And um, it's also having the, the everyday aspect um, has really just uh, been helpful, I think, for me. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, like, I mean, I had been sitting on this kind of one Android thing mm -hmm. for a long time, but it wasn't until I started going to Boston Comics Roundtable meetings that I was like, okay, I can do this. And I sort of got a glimpse on how to do it. Mm -hmm. And then everything started to like roll after that. So that yeah. made a huge difference. I published my first story with them mm -hmm. um, with Inbound 5. Um, and that gave me a lot of confidence to keep going and start doing the mini oh, thing. Cool. Yeah. They got you started, sort of? Is that like the Sort of. I mean, I, I was working on stuff, mm. and, I, and I found out about the group. Uh, I think I was just doing Google searches. I'm <laughs> like, I need to find somebody to talk to about comics, because I was just working on stuff in my bedroom, yeah. you know, um, not really knowing what I was doing, just sort of like, you know, finding stuff online, but mostly just kind of figuring stuff out as mm. I went. Um, so going there and seeing what people were doing there was like a huge help. Yeah. Um, and it was just nice to see like that community of people that were all doing the same kind of thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. And I moved to Boston about five years ago. And I, I feel like there are people here who are really working to make it welcoming. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, you get to meet people, you get to know people. And, and I feel like if you are drawing comics and you want to be in a community, there's definitely like one here that is open and welcoming. And, and I feel being in a group is very helpful. Yeah. You know, like it, it makes you better. Because I sort of feel like before I was sort of drawing in a vacuum. And now like I'm a part of a group and like I have these friends that I talk to about comics and they expose you to new ideas. Um, yeah. and, you know, you, you do different things as a result of being a part of the group. Um, I feel like, my feeling is that the, the Boston scene, like, everyone's welcome, like, you know, and, uh, you know, I mean, like, you just see it, like, in the, in the people you talk to, like, everyone just sort of does their own thing, and I feel it's, it's pretty open to that. How do you do, uh, how do you make your money in the cartoon like, is it possible? <laughs> It's not impossible. Uh, it's extremely difficult, and you have to be almost delusional, but it's cool. Uh, like, I get to obviously get paid for the Brookline Tab stuff. Um, I'm a freelancer, and I get some income from, like, selling the books and some uh, revenue from, like, the website. But I definitely have a full-time job that's not related to this. Um, I would like to make this full-time, but, you know, I love the work enough to keep going. But it's something I, I like to keep doing no matter what. I live here under my own steam. Not <laughs> um, I do make money and I, I do, I'm on a lot of, you know, business of art panels and things like that. But the thing is that there's just, you know, you don't get into comics. This is what everyone says. You don't get into comics for the money. You don't get into comics like for the 
lifestyle. You get into it because you're passionate about what you're making and your creation. It's definitely possible to, you know, make a living wage off of comics, but it's like the very rare creator that shoots stratospherically up there and is able to get a mansion and things like that. But um, it's possible to be comfortable and to make comics, and you don't have to necessarily be starving. So. <laughs> at, a, at a very, very like basic level, like this is what I enjoy doing, and you know, other, other people have other hobbies, I guess, um, and and I just don't understand them. Like I don't like watching television, and like I, I like, I really actually enjoy just sitting down here and like drawing <laughs> pictures.